Hey guys, I'm back again with another study session and today we're going to be speaking about diabetes insipidus and syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone. So let's get started. This was a video that was requested by a few students, so here we go. Antidiuretic hormone is made in the hypothalamus and stored in the posterior pituitary. And what it does, it helps the kidneys and the body manage the amount of water that's in, our, in the client's body. And what will happen is that the client's body would hold on to water and sodium. So diabetes insipidus. Now, before I get into diabetes insipidus, diabetes insipidus has nothing to do with your blood sugar. So guys, when you have your nursing exam or your NCLEX exam, do not choose any of the choices that has to do with high blood sugar, low blood sugar, or anything about blood sugar. Because diabetes insipidus has absolutely nothing to do with your client's blood sugar. Diabetes insipidus actually um, sometimes um, you might see it referred to as water diabetes because diabetes insipidus has to do with fluid balance in our body as it relates to the antidiuretic hormone. So with diabetes insipidus, you either have too little or no antidiuretic hormone. And what happens in that case is that the client is going to be putting out a large amount of diluted urine. And when I say large amount, the client can put anywhere up to 20 or even 30 liters of urine in a day. And that's a lot of urine. Okay. So, and your client is going to present as someone who is severely dehydrated because they're putting out so much urine, right? So they're going to present as severely dehydrated. And the signs and symptoms that you're going to see are extreme thirst, dry mucous membrane, poor skin turgor. And because they are putting out so much urine, they're losing a lot of fluid. And someone who's losing a lot of fluid, um, they get hypo tensive so you'll see hypotension and because the person is hypotensive um your heart is trying to um compensate so you have tachycardia and increased heart rate and if you look at my previous video on fluid and electrolyte balance and i would link it in the description below you would recognize some of these signs and symptoms as hypernatremia right? They, you know, the person will also have hypernatremia, right? So how do we treat diabetes insipidus? Well, your client just doesn't wake up one day and have diabetes insipidus. So one of the things that um, they would have to do for your client, they're going to have to try, try to treat and manage the cause of diabetes insipidus. So the first thing they're gonna do is try to correct or manage the cause. And it could be anything. It could be that the person has a brain tumor, they could have had a stroke, maybe they have meningitis, they have some kind of infection. So they're gonna try to correct and manage the cause. And they're also gonna um, administer vasopressin. And vasopressin is a drug and it acts like the antidiuretic hormone. So because your client has too little, so we're going to give them um, the medication that acts like the hormone, right? And if you would remember, like when someone has like really low blood pressure, we try to give them a pressing drug to maintain their blood pressure. So um, vasopressin is what we're going to administer for someone that has diabetes insipidus. Now, on to our next topic, which is syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone. And what happens with this is that there is too much antidiuretic hormone. Now, when you're giving someone a diuretic, they're going to be losing 
fluid, right? They're going to lose fluid. But if they have an antidiuretic, they're going to hold on to fluid. So with syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, what happens is, is the body holds on to all of the water. It holds as much of the water that it possibly can. So your client is going to have oliguria, and they're gonna present with fluid overload because they're holding on to all of the fluid. The body is holding on to all of the fluid it possibly can. So your client is gonna have hyponatremia and with hyponatremia, they're gonna have personality changes. So your clients are gonna be confused. They may become combative. They may be irritable. And they're also going to be at risk for seizures, right? So again, if you review um, the, flu the, the video that I link in the description with fluid and electrolyte balance, we also go over some of this stuff as it relates to hyponatremia, right? So how are we going to treat syndrome of inappropriate di antidiuretic syndrome? We're going to place the client on fluid restriction. They're going to be on fluid restriction. We're going to give diuretics. And because the client is holding on to so much water, we're most likely going to give them an osmotic diuretic to take some of that water off of the brain. Because remember, they're holding on to all of the, the body is holding on to all of the water it possibly can. And the client is also going to be on um fluid intake and output and daily weight so that is all the notes i have for diabetes insipidus and syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone i really hope you enjoy studying with me today and again like the video subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you never hit miss another video from me all right bye bye